and we are recording. Welcome back. Hello. We are working on the short story Scribe and the Doctor and uh, today we are sorting out uh, already the text level for the first scene. And during the break I was having a crack on different uh, different words that could mean 16 because we have established that uh, the uh, lab dweller or, or the captive uh, specimen should have should uh, should not have the regular access to uh, language aids so basically when he was brought to the lab and uh, and subjugated his language aids were ripped from him and uh, there should be a moment where doctor will establish what uh, what his natural or what what his communication mode is or how how to establish communication with him and how to calibrate his own skill level or, or his own aid level so that they can speak and uh, the specimen's name so far has been 16 and now because we have established that uh, the area the frontier area where these people were uh, were being kidnapped uh, is near the uh, human civilization that uh, uh, has some faint lineage to current era Slavic and Germanic uh, cultures uh, I grabbed some handy examples from uh, via Google tra Translate how to say 16 in various uh, uh, Slavic slash Germanic uh, ways and uh, there is I think I had Czech, Ukrainian, uh, Yiddish uh, Slovenian, Croatian, and uh, and uh, after a long stare, I decided that we're not gonna try to just say sixteen the way we say it in our days, but we're gonna turn it around, or maybe uh, rewind the language a little bit farther and uh, follow the Greek that is basically saying uh, ten six. And then I modeled the uh, spelling a little bit, and now specimen sixteen is calling himself Dexex, and there you have it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, when it comes to in-universe uh, language work and name works, there are no elaborate uh, dictionaries or no uh, uh, elaborate. Uh, phonetic schemes, there's just Google Translate yeah. and some bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> and it works extremely well. And as an off off note, as a side note, it contains a K and an X, so I am extremely happy. Right? <laughs> ah yeah, because we we, uh, we have also established that in the future everything is uh, spelled with a K. <laughs> This is, this is a future I do want to be a part of. Okay, um... <laughs> this is the important matters, I see. added another future, future thingy, so in future everything is spelled with a K and all names have to have some <laughs> apostrophes in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh! If you put the apostrophe in, because the Gathram was bought in the your area, and that's got an apostrophe as well. There's there's a little bit of a link there, right? Mm, no. There's no, some familiarities. No. no, no, no okay. No, no, no. The apost apost apostrophes have no meaning of their own. They are just a way of fancifying whatever words are there. The words have absolutely no connection whatsoever. Okay. So in this case, I took a word that was that I had already established, and just. Uh, Modeled its spelling further. This is 
completely different area. Alright. Oh, actually, uh, so when the doctor is deciphering his name... Do you mean the doctor or scribe? Sc <laughs> scribe, of course. Okay. <laughs> when when the scribe is deciphering his name, uh, there, there are like two layers of text there. So on one hand, he's taking his notes. So he's like thinking out loud, like... Dick, dick, dick. Oh, that's ten. Zek, zek, zek. That's six, isn't it? Ten, six, sixteen. And then uh, the uh, just just thinking out loud or taking notes part will uh, will then uh, switch on to the uh, uh, to the spoken word. So like, zek, zek. Sixteen. You are saying your name is sixteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, but of course, this is like the guy is sort of thumping his chest and 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 like, Dick six, Dick six, <laughs> 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 and uh, and I'm thinking. Uh, so we're we're not gonna. Oh, I'm not gonna make the scribe uh, sp speak too much of the hypothetical uh, your local language or, or your central language but uh, but there should be at least uh, uh, an expression so it's like yeah he's gonna he's gonna calibrate his uh, his lingua output Calibrating, calibrate <laughs> his lingua output in such a way that uh, that uh, smooth communication happens again, and uh, and if smooth communication happens, we convey it as English. So so there. There, there, there's no need for having like long strings of foreign words, but there could be that moment when he's sort of transitioning. So there, mm -hmm. there might be. So there might be that. That works well because it shows that there's the language discrepancy. Mm -hmm. And no, no, no. The discrepancy has already been uh, yeah, resolved no, no, by I, this point. I, I, I <clears throat> the dissonance or like uh, variety. I I was going to say that it it shows that when they understand each other, we show it as English. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was uh, this is something that I uh, was very cleverly uh, illustrated uh, in a movie I think it was what was it uh, 13 soldiers something something where Antonia Banderas is some uh, Arab explorer who teams up with some Vikings or maybe <laughs> he's kidnapped by some Vikings <laughs> It sounds amazing. The 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 movie isn't uh, movie itself isn't uh, like terribly smart or anything, but there was this one uh, one scene that stuck with me and that uh, that I have or I have sort of uh, taken as a very neat way of illustrating, uh, or or like very neat way of showing that there are different languages and then switching to the reader's language. So the, the Vikings and Panderas are on a boat and the Vikings are speaking the old Norse amongst themselves and 
and uh, he is just sitting there listening and they're like blah 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 and uh, and then English words start dropping in so it's like blah 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 boat mm-hmm. blah 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 uh, fire so he's starting to pick up the language and the more he picks up the more the uh, Norse babble is uh, is uh, replaced with English in audio and That's then excellent. at the, by the point he completely comprehends uh, the uh, language I- I- I gets uh, switched to English completely. So this <laughs> th- this is like very very elegant way of uh, of resolving something that uh, like something that you have to address, but uh, but you don't want to spend too much time on it. <laughs> so yes, basically. Th- th- what what you said <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so by the point that they both understand each other uh the text will be fully english but the moment before that would be uh would be where they both stumble with some mm, some expressions yep i think that's going to be a nice moment as well I got a, I got a, I got a warm fuzzy about that one. Okay. Oh damn, where are we on the notes? Oh, here we are. Okay. Oh wait, D- teen sex is maybe not. Uh... <laughs> 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 I was thinking like, like uh, if if he this if sixteen is sort of trying to tell his name and well he he would understand some standards so he would try to say like uh dick sex dick sex teen sex <laughs> but then i realized that <laughs> might not be the brightest thing to say <laughs> i like that idea so maybe we could find an alternative to teen yeah, sex. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> Language is tricky, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and shit like this sort of sneaks up on you because uh right now my head was completely in the linguistic problems and I wasn't like thinking like oh yes this is neat. Oh, this is too neat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we're going to keep all these notes regarding the language in a separate file mm-hmm. uh, because we I think we've already got one for the station names that you came up with um, I made up the station Caldevaza which means something something and because I didn't keep the notes we lost that so yeah I know right and because it's a corruption of a, another word, it's not like I can just slam it into Google and be like, yo, translate this thing. So I don't want to lose that again. This reminds me, let's see. No, too far back. That's not a shared. Reference and notes and pictures and stuff. Uh, notes, world building and nitpickery. Ooh. Notes, inspiration and visuals, paper scribbles, assorted notes on culture and language. Is that the one? Ah, no, this is Skype notes. This is me explaining to you what Indo-European is. Uh, assorting world building notes and doodads, such as port names. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's the one. Um, I've also found assorted notes on culture and language. Yeah, that oh, one. Okay, that was the that, different one. That was the Skype. I will rename it. Uh, 
this is uh, this is some pretty old Skype talk, so it's I don't know. It's probably easier to keep it in its own document. Mm. Rename assorted world building doodads such as port names. notes feedback notes uh, some of this stuff is really old I should make like the old old folder here <laughs> also it occurs to me that uh, the other day you were uh, uh, you were frustrated that uh, the uh, folder organization keeps changing and you keep adding the old folders or like the, the folders marked old but mm -hmm. that's that's actually normal because <laughs> as you generate new material or as you as you generate newer uh, drafts or something, the uh, existing draft that was will become the old material. So basically, there are two states for for every document. There is the when you're actively working on it, and once you're no longer actively working on it, you add the prefix old and move it into the senile documents uh, <laughs> yeah. depository the retirement uh, yeah part. yeah yeah the retired documents <laughs> <laughs> they're in a better place now <laughs> they go to live out on the farm yeah and uh, i remember that uh, we had a similar system uh, in a workplace uh, where we had we had the text documents, but we had also the code documents for uh, various uh, e-courses. So there would be several versions of everything, which meant it was very it was crucial to move the retired versions into the old folder when they were no longer in use. <laughs> that makes sense. It it's. It will save me the confusion of getting lost between active work and old work, and that's yeah, yeah. That's the important time saver. Yeah, and and the main thing is that uh, the uh, the old stuff keeps regenerating, or like there's 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 always some new retired stuff, or always some new old stuff, so. It's not like you create the folders saying this is old and be done with it. It's more like you have the depository for retired documents where you keep adding stuff. Mm -hmm. D does, this, does this include stuff like Caldevaza? So right now Caldevaza is quote unquote retired. We've got no plans on mm. going to it and we can still use ideas from it if we want. But Let me see. We're not actively working on it, right? I think it's... Uh, is more like on hold. Wait, so there is active work, post release and resolved, notes and on hold. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. So let me see. Oh, my Google's done that yeah. thing again where it's put active work at the bottom. <laughs> Code Barza is in on hold. Mm hmm. All right, cool. I'm bringing that story up far too much. I think I need to do something about that. <laughs> I don't know what though. <laughs> I should just leave it the fuck alone. That's that's the plan. Okay, so scribe arrives. I'm gonna get back onto the scribe and the dog. <laughs> scribe, scribe arrives. Uh, so the ship is called Codex. So Codex arrives and touches down. Arrives, touches down in. D d uh, okay, so now that we've got a better idea of the scene, is the docking bay. Um. Uh, okay, or is it just a landing pad? Landing or is pad it is maybe easier. Okay, so down on landing pad. And how is the how is the bay illuminated? Because there's no power in these outer regions. So is is the gas giant nearby gas giant? 
causing some glow. Yeah, let's say if the if the facility has some domes over it, and let's say let's say the uh, moon where the base is doesn't have a particularly thick atmosphere, so the interiors are sealed, or like the uh, the human shed uh, has some uh, uh, sealed domes over it, which also means the domes would be somewhat translucent to let the daylight in. So, sure, why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, have, let's have natural lighting. Natural light from nearby gas giant. Codex arrived, touches down the landing pad, translucent domes. Yeah. Natural light from nearby gas giant. And, and then. And there could be something wrong there, like uh, the, uh, the domes might be caked with the dust. Or like it's, it's apparent that nobody has. Uh, like there's some maintenance issues. So the. They are caked with dust on the outside, so the illumination is not as great as it should be. Nice. I'm going to make the note about the uh, not thick Atmo, just to mm -hmm. have it somewhere. That might just get taken into world building notes. I still don't know. I've been ambiguous. I did this like with Forgotten City. I've been ambiguous about the system that we're in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's on purpose. I don't think we need to. Yeah, let's skimp on details. Like, okay. It can it can be useful if we know certain things ourselves, but uh, none of this is relevant to the story. Mhm. Mm so, for the time being, as far as we're concerned, we're, we've landed on a moon base. It's, like, in the shadow of this gas giant. Um, well, and that's not in the shadow, in the light. Well, yeah, but, yeah, and that's all we really need to know, location-wise. And then Scribe begins his journey through the moon base, which is where the real focus is. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure... We still need to know certain background things, and uh, and we can, if we want to, we can sort of link certain uh, descriptive points to the whole. And then the ships came from the first Exodus, yada 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 yada. So <sighs> the the connection is there, but we're not focusing on it right now. Just making a quick note of that. <laughs> the first X of the ship's going from blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> <Not notes. laughs> this is how some in universe Bard is going to tell the story. <laughs> oh, you know, the first X is blah blah blah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, location wise, uh, it's, it's probably um, meaningful if. This particular system is also not too heavily populated. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have a few bustling homewards next door, then your nefarious moon base uh, might not stay hidden that long. Yeah. So, on one hand, they are taking people from the frontier worlds, and they themselves are sort of congregating near the frontier worlds. Yeah, and also it occurs to me that Frontier Worlds is a rather nice uh, sum summarizing umbrella term. I've written Frontier Worlds in paper notes. Let's make a actual Frontier Worlds. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Okay, so the thing about this is I'm gonna have to go back through this document and pick out all these notes and add them to like the world building document. But for now, they're all right. Mm-hmm. There will be sorting later. Oh, yes. Uh, and now that uh, we've added the idea that the doc... Scribe. 
This is gonna be a thing. <laughs> Uh, it's alright. That the scribe is sending out. I think if we check back these videos, I think I have uh, said it wrong from the beginning. Like I think from the very very beginning, uh, I was talking about oh the doctor, the doctor, the doctor. On most occasions, I know you mean the scribe, but there was one occasion where I had to check because the the doctor later does some translating of like mm. bits and pieces between them so i had mm. to sort of double check on that one but other than that i i do know what you mean yeah <laughs> but does the viewer i hope the, view do the viewer do you <laughs> the <laughs> wise and handsome slash beautiful viewer yes. should know yes. exceptionally so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, so uh, once the scribe has landed yeah. The Codex has landed. Yep. <laughs> uh, once he has performed his uh, suit checks, run the diagnostics, uh, I think before he steps out himself, he will send his uh, sensors out. So, like, uh, he will know that there is no immediate danger in the immediate area. So, with, with every advance advancing move he should send the sensors sensor sensor bugs out first so they they are like uh, moving like a uh, like a bubble around him so that uh, his uh, sensory perimeter is extended And, and the sensors uh, should be small, like bumblebee size, or even smaller, and uh, and uh, they should be docked on his uh, on his suit when idle. So basically, he can just pluck one from his suit and say, uh, "Okay, you go there." And so they are they are like detachable suit parts, really. Okay, so <laughs> this is so, this sort of crosses over to section. So he performs his suit checks, runs diagnostics before he steps out himself. Mm -hmm. He will send his sensors out so he knows there is no immediate danger or in the immediate area. I've spelled immediate wrong twice. <laughs> <laughs> before he moves on to next. Okay, so this is where it breaks, right? So he will send his sensors out to know he's not in any immediate danger in the immediate area. At this point, Scribe leaves the ship. Mm hmm. Scribe leaves Codex. And then the secondary note to that is before he moves on to every next area, he sends the sensors. I'm going to. the sensors. to check. check. His, his sensory, sensory perimeter, perimeter is extended. extended. Sensors should be bumblebee size or smaller and they should be docked on his suit when idle. He can pluck one from his suit and say, okay, you go there, detachable suit parts. Yeah, okay, yeah, I think we need to change the language from sensors to bugs. I was using drones before, so we need to stop that. It's a bug, not a feature. <coughs> is it the bug? Is it the feature? <laughs> not look directly at the bugs. Um, there, so after Scribe leaves Codex, he does... We've got a note here that says Scribe does checks. These are additional checks on his suit? Or on uh, himself? No, I, th I, I think I, was, I meant uh, the environment. So it's like he's uh, receiving info from each bug. Ooh. Okay, let me just scribe receives info from each bug. And uh and uh basically advances slowly advances through the area uh bef uh after peeking behind the corner and checking the vitals first. Okay. And during this process, he's also taking notes. Sweet. So I think that. Oh, shh, no. What's <laughs> that? I don't like all of that. Bad we Google. can get rid of this because we've extended this out. So as he's doing his seat track, he's sending the drone buggers off to gather information on the surroundings. 
Upon the alarm that life signs are dropping, alarm somebody else is nearby, that somebody should... Oh, okay, so this happens later. So he's doing his injury, he sends enough to try to gather information on the surroundings. Uh, so this is a note that belongs later. So okay. let's take this and... Okay, he will proceed sending his sensor ahead and then somebody catches one of his sensors. So I'm going to add like an extended note here. Mm -hmm. Upon the alarm, the line signs are dropping, alarm somebody else is nearby. Somebody should catch and squash one of that. Okay, so that's all put together now. Um. So basically, the first scene reaches the end point or reaches the maximum tension when somebody snatches up his uh, one of his bugs and squashes it. Mm-hmm. Dun dun dun. Okay, so he's moving forward through the moon base. I'm gonna move this scenery. Oh no, I can't because it's got notes on the thing. Okay. <laughs> He notices the flight terminal equipped to receive sh hundreds of ships a day, so this should really go close to where, to where the ship is, right? Flight terminals. Or maybe leave it where it is. Because uh, before he starts taking notes on the scenery, there is the everything that he does to take a look at the scenery. Okay. And uh, uh, and if the text is too much, then maybe, uh, maybe either add different color markers or or add like notes about what the scribe sees and what the scribe does. This way, you can differentiate between the two. Because uh, in this case. The notes that are there before all describe what the what the scribe does, and uh, the what the scribe sees at the same time. It's really in the text. It's going to overlap with the what he does, but right now in the notes, you're trying to move it elsewhere. I think I'm just trying to get a better better grasp on the pacing oh, or oh, not okay. the pacing the step Rhythm. by stepness Rhythm? oh okay uh so uh, he, as he's doing his process uh he's uh, he, you know what you could do you you could literally uh spell out the steps this way you can keep the surrounding description under the what he does step so it's clear that yeah, he sees all that while he's doing this thing, so it's all happening at the same time. Yeah. And of course, uh, once the text itself uh, realizes, then we will remove all the scaffolding, but, uh, but for now, especially in the beginning, there will be all this extra, extra helping wheels and all that. Mm -hmm. So, st so step one is Codex arrives. Mm -hmm. I think we got that down. Uh, st step two is Scribe performing his suit checks and dumping the data into his ship. I don't think we've actually noted that. Scribe performs suit checks, runs diagnostics. Before he steps out himself, he will send his sensors out. Oh, okay. All that this step is one one step together. All that uh, goes under suit suit check, suit diagnostics. Okay. Or or even equipment check. So suit bugs, everything. So he performs the check. Performs the everything check, I'm going to yes. call it. <laughs> All right. Step three, scribe leaves codex. Uh, more like step three, uh, scribe and his uh, sensor swarm enter the terminal. Or like en enter the base.
Okay. Or venture into the base. And this, <clears throat> and this is this where he notices everything sort of built up to receive lots. But then later on in the story, as he's moving through the guard posts and that sort of thing, that's when he's like, hey, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, no, I think that's the next step. Scribe and his, and his sensor swarm venture into the base. Scribe mm. and his sensor swarm uh, observe the surroundings. Then step five is scribe notices that the environment is bogus. Or like scribe notices that the I don't know. This is a paper moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great term. Uh, somewhere between all this are uh, so the uh, I'm, so I'm thinking the first note about the life signs changing uh, should be between step one and two so that's 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 why he's uh, he's not sure if it means anything because he was just he was still he was still moving so this is part this is part of step uh no actually it's after step 2 okay so it's it's between 2 and 3 so it's let's say it's at the end of uh step 2 is where his uh, sensors pick up the life signs and then the numbers fluctuate or flicker I'm like ah oh, i wonder what's up with that Like that. Write it down for yourself, whatever you, whichever way okay. you find is helpful. <laughs> that's, that's not for me now. Moon. So, step six is when. when uh, he very explicitly sees the alert that life signs have changed from 2 to 1 and and register some odd noises from farther ahead so <laughs> the fingers are failing describe explicitly sees the alert that life signs have changed from 2 to 1 and register some odd noises from further ahead Harder. Ooh, okay. This is uh, this is one thing that I can explain <laughs> because of the guy who would edit my texts <coughs> when I when I worked in my old workplace, or more like uh, the uh, plain language guide book that uh, that he should. I think it was I think it was in this guide, or maybe somebody else explained. It. Anyway. Farther with A uh, is about physical distance, and further with U is about the abstract distance. Oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Neat, huh? That's pretty clever. Uh huh. Okay. So far, as in farther with an A. Yes. Physical distance. Okay. And, and if I and just remember that, yeah. I don't have to remember the other. <laughs> yeah. The and the and the other is the other. Yep. <laughs> Right, far as physical distance. Yeah, right, and and, and also and and also it might be that right now, uh, as you're writing down the steps, you might not be able to trace all the steps. Maybe you skip. You're maybe you're skipping some, but uh, the scene ends, or or like the 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 build up leads to the somebody snatches the uh, the bug. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe maybe there are a few more steps in between here, but uh, but that's where it all leads up to. Step six, he's already in the checkpoint area. Is that right? Or is that step seven? He moves uh, farther ahead. You can leave it uh, you can leave it um, ambiguous, like you don't you don't have to uh, place everything in place, so six might be uh, I think the um, the life sign change should happen once he has already noticed the bogusness. Okay. So it's like right. uh, uh, try to uh, try to think of it this way, like like the alarm levels are gradually going up. So noticing that there is something wrong with the environment is like okay, something might be wrong, like two or three on the scale of alarm, and then <laughs> there's like bam, life life signals change like oh shit <laughs> yeah <coughs> so it's like the oh shit should be escalating cool and then so step seven would be their meeting pretty much uh not yet well step seven's the him sends the drones out to investigate and they get snatched or one of them gets snatched and that's the sort of that's, climax. That's, that's what I'm telling you. Leave some, leave a gap there because okay. uh, this is this is important build up. If you try to break it down into very clear steps right now, th this is this is where this is where where there's the danger of over outlining. Okay. All right. So leave leave some ambiguous. That's that's why I'm saying leave a leave a gap here. You know that it will lead up to the point where somebody snatches the the bug. But since that is a poignant moment, it it needs a proper build up, and okay. and right now the, the step counting itself is sort of like it's uh, it's not exact. Uh, the method counteracts how excited uh, how exciting the action has to be, so it's like leave it for now. All right. Besides, you have enough uh, num numbered steps here that you should be able to uh, organize the existing notes into a sort of chronological display anyway. Yep. So that's that's the thing. These these steps are not a goal unto themselves. These are just helping you to sort out uh, the uh, the order of some of the notes. The head fuzz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we've got an awful lot of scaffolding in place. <laughs> now comes the hard part. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the, uh, the scribe looked <laughs> around him. It was very dark. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to be like. Struggling for every word. Okay. Um, yeah. And we've got a super badass name for 16 now as well. <laughs> Teen sex. <laughs> oh, we 
we've got an idea on the location. Yeah, okay, so I am... The fog is lifting a bit now, right, mm -hmm. with this story. It's it's no longer in that first or second draft territory. It's in the we've torn it apart territory and are now going to reassemble it with clearer heads. We are rebuilding it. Yeah. We have the technology. Um, so... I'm pretty happy to call it here for mm -hmm. the moment. Yeah, and uh, from this point on we might uh, even work on se certain sections independently and then b bring it all together. Yeah. But yes, Maybe, possibly. I'm happy to call it here. Let's back to recording. Thank you mm -hmm. everybody for watching. Indeed. Keep to uh, Stay tuned. There will be more. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.